Joe, why does the Azure Sentinel integration matter uh, to to Cato customers? What what does this do for them? Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on, um, and I appreciate it. You know, when we when we hear from our customers, when we hear from the field that they that you know individuals are looking for Sentinel integration, it's really to bring together a lot of data sources for correlation. You know, um, in the uh, Cato environment, we have uh, you know the events data, we have the XDR data, anti malware, all that stuff associated with what we see traversing our networks. Now, there's data, as you can imagine, believe it or not, that exists outside of our networks. And so this data that we don't get exposure to, that we don't have visibility into, how do we correlate that together with what we know? And so we see customers leveraging solutions like Microsoft Azure in order to bring together all that data into one giant homogenous uh, decision-making machine. And we see a lot of this, I get, when I was in SC, I heard a lot of this, you know, integrations with big data sets. We're showing Azure Sentinel today, but this same methodology could be applied to, to products like Splunk or really any big data repository. Is is that true, Joe? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, you know, it's something that we're seeing in some really cool solutions out in the industry. Like if you're looking at uh, Wi-Fi, for instance, um, you know, some really great uh, features have been released with like Juniper Mist where they've looked back and said, okay, well, we have all of this data, just like us. We have all this um, you know, network data that we're seeing, all of this traffic data, all of these patterns that are emerging, and we're viewing it from the security and performance perspective. And customers are saying, well, can I use this for di business decisions? Mm -hmm. You know, what business insights can I get from this data? And yep. so, you know, we saw that with like Juniper Mist, and we're seeing that with the Cato data set yep. to yep. say, you know, okay, what do I know about my workforce, my customer base, yeah. my patterns, uh, and how can I apply that to business? And in order to do that, you know, they need access to that raw mm -hmm. data. So they how do I share this business across my organization so more teams have access to it, not just the ones that leverage Cato on a daily basis? Right, right. And imagine, yeah. you know, your BI group. Right. So, you know, your your business uh, analysts, you know, your, your your data analysts that are not security focused, that aren't data, that aren't uh, network focused. You know, those individuals, you know, they love getting more sources of data so that they can enrich their reports and their results and their analysis. And yep. this is another source that we're allowing them to enrich their results. Yep. All right. So having said that, you want to walk us through a quick uh, demo, Joe? Sure, sure. Sounds cool. great. We're, we're super excited uh, with this one. Um, so as we can see here, this is the Cato management application, um, you know, for Cato customers, this will be near and dear to the heart. Uh, this is the first page that you see when you log in. Now, for uh, your environment, you know, we're just using a dev account uh, that we do for demonstrations here. Um, but we're really looking at two big pieces right now. One is what I like to think of. I'm not sure if anybody else calls it this, but I like to think of it as the fire hose of data. You know, mm -hmm. all of the data, all of the events that are generated um, will show up in your events feed. And I don't have any filters applied. So this is this is literally everything. All of the So Cato customers, if you go to your event data, just like Joe, you're going to see everything that Cato is generating off of your infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, and especially without any kind of like filters applied or anything, you know, we're not digging into just security events or just connectivity events or things like that or user end user experience events. This is this is everything that we're observing on the platform in a raw format. So mm -hmm. just like Josh, you were mentioning with the business analysts, right? Um, this is the data that they would find valuable. This is everything. So this is, you know, finding out whether or not, you know, a customer is coming down a certain aisle to, you know, correlate type of thing. Yep. Um, so, so this, this is, is one source of data that we can send to Azure and a other third-party integration. The other we were talking about before when we were prepping for this is uh, our XDR platform can send the correlated events too, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I would I would kind of look at it as which which feed is valuable to who? Right. So if you're a business analyst and you want to use the data for non security, non networking stuff, then this raw fire hose of data is fantastic. If you are a security analyst, if you are a network engineer, if you are a NOC or a SOC, a security operations center, then where you're going to find probably the most value is in the correlated data. So that comes in the form of XDR stories, for instance. Mm -hmm. Well, we take all of the events that have transpired and we associate them with 
with uh, particular sources of attack mm -hmm. or a particular host that, that might be out of date or might be doing so this is pre-correlated telemetry data that we can then send out to that third party integration so you've got raw events then you have the xdr stories which have telemetry and some intelligence behind them that we can also ship off to azure or the third party tool yep yep absolutely okay. so Sweet. now we have these two main sources of data you know the raw and the value added enriched data set okay. that we have to send up um, and so there's a couple of ways to send it, you know, for, uh, you know, if we want to send everything really straightforward, um, if we want to select a subset of things to send, uh, you know, one of the features that Cato customers are actively leveraging at the moment is by saying, okay, I want to enable the sending of this data to my uh, particular storage account. So a customer mm -hmm. will enter in their Amazon S3 uh, bucket that they'll write to. And mm -hmm. we'll send it over, you know, that which they ask for. So if they want, uh, you know, security events, we'll say, okay, we're going to send over all security events uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, all connectivity events, uh, anything that's in here, you know, we do it by types, subtypes, and this okay. gets written to their blob storage. And that's- This is if you already have the Amazon S3 bucket or the Azure blob uh, already built, right? Okay. This yep. is, that's one option. Okay. Yep. yep. That's one option. And kind of a fun one is if like you're an AWS customer, then you can leverage like AWS Glue or AWS Athena yep. directly in order to perform the analytics. And the so value of that is that they are already customers and users. This is way these third-party integrations are really starting to work because that acts as a really easy middleware between these disparate systems. Is that a fair assessment? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And okay. you know, it's in a standardized data format that all okay. of those disparate systems can read, which is okay. JSON. So everybody okay. can use JSON. So okay, perfect. And then um, the second option is we have an ARM template that helps deploy some of this. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So or, for more specific solutions, uh, like for instance, we want to get this data into Microsoft Sentinel, uh, mm -hmm. or we would, or you know, just even in general, we want to get this data into Microsoft Azure Log Analytics uh, for the BI people. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just like you mentioned, Josh, uh, we have an ARM template that deploys uh, your Sentinel integration with Cato Networks. Uh, you know, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you click, you deploy the ARM template. You need two pieces of information. One is your Cato account ID, uh, mm -hmm. which you can you know just get up here. Um, you know, my number is up there. Mm -hmm. uh, you generate a Cato API key, which is done right in your Cato management application. You click mm -hmm. on API keys. Uh, you put those values in there. You click on create and it creates the resources and the integrations necessary to bring your data from your and then you do the event integration after that because it's already it's been created and now you have your blob is that how that works or do i have that well backwards? no no i mean at this point that is that is it so okay gotcha it so it's already done it's already yep. populated yep. because you have put the you put the got it okay that makes sense yep. and this is cool. a completely native uh and one of the questions we get is this a native Azure solution, and yes, it is. So this is okay. using what's called uh, Azure Function Apps behind the scene um, mm -hmm. in order to just run serverless in the Microsoft Azure platform. Nice. Uh, no configurations, you just got to enter your API key and you're happy. Uh, from there- And if customers are interested in this today, we're just advising them to reach out to their, their sales engineering and their sales teams to get more information on it as it sits today. Yeah. And then we can help deploy it and, and walk, 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 through, walk you through it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Hit up your uh, your sales team, your salesperson. Um, they'll be able to, you know, set up a time to walk you with, to walk you through this, um, and then we'll show you, um, you know, where this is going uh, as far as the content hub moving forward. Um, but now and then the third the third step I have, Joe, is kind of validating what's that look like. So we have it set up. We did Cato event integration. We deployed the Azure ARM template in this particular case for Azure Sentinel. How do we validate that that data is in Sentinel, and kind of what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, easiest thing to do is uh, let's look at the reports, right? Um, because you know, the as soon as you deploy this template, you've got a lot of data in Cato, right? Uh, it takes a little bit of time for all of it to ship up. Into mm -hmm. Sentinel, but it's going to start immediately shipping that data up and it's going to go from oldest to most recent until it's caught up. Once it's caught up, you know, everything operates uh, very fast. Um, so right now, you know, we have our data being uh, brought up. And so our workbooks are going to start being populated with data. Oh, cool. So what we have here is, you know, just the home page of the workbook. Uh, it just gives you an overview of, you know, events, stories, things like that. 
Um, where we see a lot of value is when we start digging into either the stories or the events. So like, you know, if I want to go into a particular story, um, you know, suspicious DNS activity found, uh, we're able to really dig into a lot of, you know, what we're seeing from the platform and bring it into the uh, Sentinel workbook uh, functionality and get yeah, some cool. details about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. can cross correlate this data with everything else they have in their business once it's in here, right? So if you've got other security sources of data, if you've got other business intelligence sources, once this data is here, you can correlate this however you see fit within your organization. Yeah, yeah. And we can, and you're using the same tools you are for other sources of data. Uh, and we can show an example too. It's, uh, you know, KQ, KQL, the Custo query language that you're using. Uh, and so you're just leveraging the exact same thing. We'll show you how it works with like custom tables in a second here too. Uh, Cause like, I think it's exciting. It's fun stuff. Um, and then, you know, obviously that fire hose of data, you know, ends up in here too. We have all of our events, uh, you know, and we can dig through all of this is based on the information brought up from that one arm template that's being run. Okay. So, okay, cool. So in summary, we talked about the Azure Sentinel integration with Cato networks. It can be worked with any third party tool, very similarly, because you can use uh, Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage as that middleware to share that data across your organization. The Cato setup, really simple. You already showed it, super easy with the event integration. Uh, and then we talked about the Azure template. You can get that from your sales teams to be able to work on it. You, Joe showed it, very easy. And then finally, you know, Joe, just validating that data in Azure Sentinel. Any, anything else you want to share in closing with this with this integration or third party integrations, Joe? Uh, you know, I think just the um, just the fact that your data is not going to be locked away somewhere. You know, one of the things that we really wanted to do is ensure that your data would be useful to you in whatever format um, you know you were consuming it. So you know, all the data is standard JSON format. You know, it's the industry standard. Uh, you know, you can send it to your Azure buckets for consumption. And then when it comes in here, it is in your log analytics workspace. So you can say, oh, let me get that data directly. So now this is all discreetly mapped, you know, elements that are part of your mm -hmm. course. And this is what Josh, you were mentioning of, hey, we need to do our own analytics, our own, our own, yeah. our own decisions on this. And so this is what you're seeing. It's right here in there. Um, you know, we put it in the uh, custom logs and we're able to, you know, provide you with that data directly uh, for consumption. That's awesome. All right, Joe, really appreciate it. I'm excited what you've done here and I'm excited for the future on this. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.